This comet's really cool because it does have that tail from the sun's radiation blasting it, but it also has a forward-facing tail. If the sun is here and the comet is here, the sun sends the solar wind to the comet, the tail goes behind the comet. Guess what? This comet is at the reverse side. But is it nature or something else? We're going to find out soon. Okay, so it's going to be a few weeks before 3i Atlas comes back into view. Right now, it is hidden behind the sun, and even during its closest approach, Earth-based telescopes are not going to be able to see it. What's worse, the images that NASA captured right before all this, well, we haven't seen those because of possibly the government shutdown, but our next guest has done more math, more calculating on every aspect of 3i Atlas than anyone I know. He is writing right now that if 3i Atlas is alien tech, this will be the make or break moment. The one and only Avi Loeb joins us now. He is head of the Galileo Project, founding director of Harvard's Black Hole Initiative. Professor, welcome back. Uh, so starting with these new images, what's going on with the tail? Is this now just a, a normal comet off-gassing, or as at least one of your colleagues has suggested, is this thrust from some sort of alien tech that's like maybe stepping on the brakes a little bit? What do you think? Well, thanks for having me. We don't know the answer to that, and we better observe it, because uh, aside from uh, the anti-tail turning to a tail, which, uh, you know, could have a natural origin, uh, I actually wrote two scientific papers trying to explain it, uh, but it's not uh, a simple explanation, because uh, we don't know if there is dust at all around this object. Mm. Uh, but even more alarming, it's its size, the fact that it's at least a thousand, maybe up to a million times more massive than previous interstellar objects, uh, the first and second ones. And so uh, we have to monitor it. And uh, gladly, um, yesterday we had the, an announcement by the International Asteroid Warning uh, Network that will uh, uh, establish a campaign uh, coordinating observations from all around the globe in trying to get as much data as possible about the motion of this object, because as it gets close to the sun, actually a week from now, uh, on uh, October 29th, uh, it will be at a distance of 203 uh, million kilometers from the sun. That is the best point to have a maneuver, uh, to uh, use an engine that would either uh, give a thrust to the object in the direction of its motion, in which case it will gain kinetic energy, or do the reverse, in which case the object would break and perhaps even release some mini probes towards the planets if it's technological. So we would like to know as much as possible about its future path, about its the nature of material coming out of it. Uh, it's you know, the beauty of doing science. I, I, look, I, I am scared that people uh, watching this might not appreciate the, uh, pardon the pun, but the gravity, uh, the significance of what you just described and where 3i Atlas is about to be gravitationally and why this is such a pivotal moment. But like, as I understand it, and if we can throw up uh, that that mock-up that we have of the, the orbital uh, path here, uh, this is kind of like watching some unknown object barreling towards a five-way intersection, right? And, and we're waiting to see whether uh, it, it hooks a right or hooks a left or it makes any sort of movement or whether it just like continues on its, its trajectory here, right? If it continues on, eh, probably a comet. Right. But if there's any movement at all, because of the gravity assist that it's getting, like something's up, right? Yeah, well, the most uh, puzzling uh, aspect of this object is that it's uh, a trajectory is lying in the plane of the planets, and it's coming uh, pretty close to three planets, uh, Mars, uh, Venus, and, and Jupiter, and uh, that suggests maybe it has some purpose. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that the object itself would deviate from its path. It could also release uh, some uh, smaller objects that would uh, use this maneuver uh, close to the sun, and we just need to monitor and see if there is uh, some unusual activity either around the object or coming towards planets. You know, there are orbiters around Mars that we are monitoring the sky around the, the Earth with uh, three observatories of the Galileo project, and I asked my research team to check for any unusual activity. 
Yeah, and, and I mean, to add on to that, like all of this is happening just as this thing goes into our Earth blind spot. It is pretty wild. Uh, when are we going to get better data? Because the Internet right now is chock full of people already saying um, things that, that making crazy claims like 3i Atlas has already changed course. Like the misinformation out there is insane. So like when will we know conclusively here? Yeah, we need data collected by instruments, and we're still waiting for the high-rise camera on board the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter because of the NASA uh, shutdown. Uh, we haven't got access to that data. It should be the best resolution image, uh, three times better in pixel resolution than the Hubble Space Telescope image we had. This one will give us 30 kilometers per pixel resolution, so that will shed a lot of light because we would see also uh, the uh, jet coming from the object sideways, uh, not uh, uh, in the direction of the sun as we saw it before. But um, uh, uh, most importantly, during uh, December, on December 19th, it will come closest to Earth, and that will be uh, one week before Christmas. We will we could get the gift of seeing the, the best image of it from Earth. And then, of course, when it comes close to Jupiter, the question is, what would it look like then? And we have the Juno spacecraft that I spoke with the principal investigator of Juno, uh, Scott Bolton, and he told me that they will use their uh, radio antenna to also search for any radio emission from this object. Hmm. And of course, if we detect any, that would be a technological signature as well. Yeah, Christmas could come a little early to astronomers like you. Uh, Professor, thank you so much for joining us. We thank you for watching. And remember, stay updated on breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or watch live on our YouTube channel.